need for system planning and operational studies so what is the need for system planning and operational studies so there are uh, three uh, important thing for planning and operation of power system one is load flow analysis short circuit analysis that means a fault analysis then third one transient analysis call it as a stability analysis okay so for this three analysis we are going for a system planning and operational studies so what do you mean by load flow analysis so load flow analysis is determination of voltage current power and the reactive power so real power and reactive power at various point in an electrical network so the main objective here to identify the potential problems in terms of unacceptable voltage conditions so that is due to some fault or overloading or decreasing reliability or any failure of the transmission system to meet the performance criteria it's the main objective of the load flow analysis and second one to determine the effectiveness of the alternative plans developed to prevent the foreseen problem that is this problems unacceptable voltage conditions overloading decreasing reliability and this problems along with that for the future development example addition of new loads new generating station or new transmission line so this can be analyzed using a load flow analysis how much load is traveling here from one point from sending end to receiving end 100 megawatt of load is traveling whether uh, the transmission line is uh, withstanding that much amount of load how long it will uh, withstand this data can be taken from the history and we are we are planning and we are studying those things and based on that we can erect a new generating station at which point we need this generating station a new transmission line whether we need a new transmission line or we can use the existing transmission line in a economic manner okay so this thing can be uh, analyzed and planned and studied uh, using the load flow analysis and second one is a short circuit analysis so here uh, short circuit in the sense it is a fault we are talking about the balanced fault as well as the unbalanced fault three phase fault we call it as a balanced fault and this three fault we call it as a unbalanced fault in some cases we'll be having open conductor fault also open circuit fault also can be possible so this can be analyzed and uh, which location the fault occurs immediately we need to take uh, preventive measures and open the circuit breaker so the main objective is to determine the current interrupting capacity of the circuit breaker so for this particular line how much fault current will be flowing that can be analyzed and based on the fault current value we need to install the circuit breaker with that capacity then third one is a transient stability transient stability is defined as the ability of the power system to remain in synchronism or a stable value under large disturbance conditions such as fault or switching operation sudden fault occurs to the system then there will be an oscillation in the system so there there, there will be a voltage fluctuations okay so that we call it as a disturbance and uh, in some cases there will be a switching operation sudden inclusion of load or sudden removal of load then it will lead to a disturbance to the overall system that the stability get disturbed so once the stability get disturbed after that it comes to the normal value okay after the large disturbance whether the system comes to the normal level that we call it as a transient stability system to remain in synchronism after disturbance it comes to synchronism again okay which, which is a stable state again after the large disturbance we call it as a transient stability and need for analysis so why we need to analyze these things provide reliable uninterruptible supply with this I'll, i want to tell one more thing need for analysis what are all the analysis short circuit analysis power flow analysis and stability analysis so what is the need for these three analysis to provide a reliable uninterruptible supply to the load or uh, we call that as a load dispatch then both voltage and frequency must be within close tolerance so that consumer equipment may operate satisfactorily okay so we are uh, in our house we are using so many equipments okay electrical equipment electronic equipment so if continuously we are if you are facing voltage fluctuation then our equipment will Uh, will, uh, equipment won't work okay so there will be some fault in the uh, there may be some uh, what uh, mal function in the in our equipment so in order to avoid that we need to receive a quality of power that uh, power utility company they have to provide a quality of power to the consumer okay so the quality of power can be decided with this two factor v and f voltage and frequency it should be maintained within the close tolerance value okay so the voltage will be calculated in terms of a per unit that is the voltage is the tolerance value is plus or minus 0.05 per unit and the frequency plus or minus 0.5 hertz it means in india we are using 50 hertz so 49.5 to 50.5 is allowed so that is a border uh, that is 49.5 is also very less we have to maintain with the close tolerance okay so nowadays if you uh, see in the sldc they are maintaining 49.9 
49.93, so like that very close uh, values they are maintaining. Okay, so thereby we are getting a quality of power. Okay, and second one as well, electrical electric utilities are large in size. Planning for future expansion is essential. So for that we are going for analysis. And third one, system being planned or to be optimal with respect to cost, then performance and operational efficiency. So whatever we are planning, if you are, if you are, if I want to install more power plants. Okay, then I need to look after this optimal optimal condition as well as with respect to the cost, performance and operational efficiency. And fourth one, for the maintenance of generation, transmission and distribution facility, we are going for this analysis. So these are the blocks we are having uh, that is uh, planning, implementation of the plans, monitoring and comparing plans with results. Okay, so whatever you are planning, we are implementing, then we are monitoring whether it is correct or not. If there is any deviation in what we plan, then we need to take a corrective measures or corrective action and again this cycle continues. Okay, so this is the, this block diagram explains about the planning and operational analysis of the power system. So what are all the steps? First planning of a power system, implementation of the plans, monitoring system, compare plans with results. If no undesirable deviation occurs, then directly go to the planning of system. If undesirable deviation occurs, then take corrective action, then go to the planning of the system. Okay, so corrective action, action is necessary only if there is a deviation. Otherwise, we can directly go to the planning of the system, directly from monitoring.